You kind of do the projections and, you know, they're telling you you're going to be anywhere from a second to a fifth round draft pick or whatever, you know, whatever. I can honestly say this. When I met Tony Dungy, who had been the head coach here for two years at that point, I was like, oh, wow, black head coach in Tampa. Did not know that. <laughs> 1997 was a big draft year for us. We finished up the 96 season strong, but uh, didn't make the playoffs. We're still growing, and we knew we needed some playmakers. Heard about these twins at University of Virginia. Playmaker on offense, Tiki Barber, but playmaker on defense, Rondé Barber, who maybe doesn't get as much publicity as Tiki because he doesn't have the ball as much. When I met him at the Combine, I did not know who played for the Bucks, who coached the Bucks. They were a team that wore orange and had a ambiguous pirate holding a knife in his mouth. So we start looking at Rondé, and he has all the characteristics we're looking for. Uh, he's not an overly big guy, but we said that size wasn't the most important thing for us. What those guys wanted was me, upstanding, smart, a lot of talent, maybe underrated. Knowing what to do, playing with passion, being smart, being a great teammate. The team that they built and all the, all the guys were like that, with the exception of, you know, maybe one guy that wore 99, but you know, he's a great guy at heart. It was interesting now, we've got our eye on him, where do we have to pick to get him? Uh, we knew that a lot of people wouldn't take him in the first or second round because of his size. Uh, but for us, he was a first round talent that we ended up drafting in the third round. At some point that night, Nancy Hasselman from the Bucks called me. He's like, hey, it's Nancy Hasselman from the Bucks. I'm going to put you on with Coach Dungy. To come into that Buccaneer defense in the late 90s, uh, you needed some self-confidence. We all coming into the NFL think that we're stars, ready to go. There's a learning curve. I think it was tough for Rondé at first. If I had been there four years, Derek and Warren Sapp had been there for two years, and we had just really started to go to Pro Bowls and all that. I saw a lot of uh, you know, things I saw myself, just trying to get acclimated, play a position, and do certain things uh, that he wasn't quite used to doing in college. Rondé so badly wanted to be one of the guys, but it had already been established and people started to call us the big three. And I think he was the guy going, wait, when, when can it be the big four? You could tell Minicamp probably the way he worked, his work habits and stuff like that. He would show the emotion in practice. I remember Monty can't say my name right. He's calling me Randy. He's not Rondé to me. I always call him Randy. Randy Barber because Rondé wasn't enough. Sap and Brad Culpepper and everybody Randy, Randy, yeah, <laughs> they just won't let it go. We were asked to play in space. He and I on opposite sides of the field in our famous Tampa 2 defense. I was essentially a, a, a mini me of Derek Brooks. They'd expect me to, to make plays that a linebacker would make if he was in that position. So Monty said, I, I can blitz him. I can use him in the running game. I can use him in deep pass defense. I can use him in the deep third. Whatever we have to do, he can do it. He was so quick. We come in and fake him right back in my He come off that edge. God, he, he started to light you up right now. <laughs> my playbook was definitely more detail to the job because I was playing outside and inside. We had to be in sync on a lot of things because we were opposite each other, but was asked to do very similar things. He had a lot of talent coming out, studying the game and understanding the importance of the details of what's required to play in that defense. That wasn't always the most important thing to him. But I really remember the conviction of Herm Edwards saying, this kid, you know, he's got something special to him. And you would not have thought that after our first game, when, when uh, his first game, when Rob Moore just absolutely torched him. It was a rough game, and we've all had those. 1997, my rookie year. Playing in the old sombrero, baby. Arizona Cardinals are coming to town. And you're on the 53-man roster with an expectation that you're going to play 
but then there's five guys that they don't play every week that, that are inactive. It was a little bit of a slow start for him. We had some other rookies that year that got into the lineup a little bit faster, played earlier. A lot of men in his position could get discouraged. I mean, you're working to get up every week and you're competing and you're not even dressing out. The beginning part of that year, I was always inactive. It was frustrating, man. You almost start to accept your fate, which sucks. But for him, it was always putting in the work, uh, never being discouraged, and uh, that's what you came to appreciate as a coach. There was a week like, I was going to get an opportunity to go play, and I, had, I was going to be the, the, the nickelback. I was going to be the third corner that came in outside when Anthony Parker went inside. Rob Moore was a tremendous player. We didn't know a lot about him at the time, um, but he ended up proving that, that he was a great player down the road. Early in the game, they just were playing three deep, and that was ball down the sideline. I had no chance. I had no idea what I was doing. I was out of position. Technique was bad, bad, bad. And it's easy to put the blame on one person, but it was more of our defense not playing up to maybe our, our standard than one particular guy. I think he had 146 yards, and all of them were on me. <laughs> Every single one of them. And guess what? I didn't see the rest of the year. My name at the top of the special teams list. Like, no, nope, he's not playing. I know Rondé was disappointed that this was his chance to play, his chance to start, and maybe the game didn't go the way he wanted. That didn't discourage him. It was a catalyst. You know, talk about springboards, right? Kind of need it. You need adversity. I captured that adversity and started getting better. He just stayed grinding and really did not get discouraged. He was embarrassed because of his pride and who he is. And then from there, it was like, OK, you need to sit for a little while. I mean, you just know his attitude was, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that I should be out there. And the guys that are willing to put their cleats on and go work on the grass, those are the guys that get better. I've been grinding, man. Since that Rob Moore game, Arizona Cardinals game, I've been grinding, trying to figure out how to get better at my job. I've taken a lot of reps in practice, all scout team reps. That's what Her one thing Herm said. Take every single rep you can. Don't take a playoff. And then all of a sudden, I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, hey, Randy, you up this week. And he looked at me, he said, what? And I said, you're up. You're playing, buddy. We're going to find out how much he's grown. You're going to be our nickelback against the Green Bay Packers. Second round of the playoffs at Lambeau. I'm like, excuse me while I go throw up. And the next playoff game we're in, uh, Rondé Barber has a big, big role, and he's playing because he's not going to be denied. He grew up. There's no doubt about that. That, that taste, feeling like my first game in college against Florida State, that was the first time in the NFL where I felt like, I can play this game. I can play at this level. So Rondé Barber started the last 215 games of his career, which started in the middle of 1999 and till the end, 2012, 13 more seasons, he played it and started every single game. And believe me, he was not injury free that entire time. Going in the train room did nothing to help you get healthy other than let everybody else know that you were hurt. I took the challenge of, I'm playing this week regardless. I'm going to go out and practice and figure out how I'm going to play. It's funny because there is a picture hanging on the wall in the training room of Rondé Barber. And the reason that's funny is because Rondé Barber did not want to go into that room. He didn't want anybody to know if he had any injuries. He didn't want the Buccaneers training staff to be tempted to put him on the injury report even, which is why he almost never showed up on the injury report. And that's a symbol hanging there for guys, any other guys on the team, that that's the kind of strength that really makes a special player. And it's intercepted by Rondé Barber. Intercepted, and it's a touchdown. You can't have a better day as a corner than Rondé Barber has had. My next three years, 98, 99, 2000, I turned into a good pro, good pro football player. I was doing a lot with the defense. And he did not miss a practice. He did not miss a game. He did not miss a play. He did not miss a meeting. And I don't think I've seen anything like it since. 
He was opportunistic, and that came in a variety of ways. He had tremendous instincts. He was great at baiting people into plays. And then I think he brought this uniqueness of blitzing from the slot position. And we really started to use that throughout his career. I used to call him a little chihuahua because he's not the biggest dude, but man, is he feisty. <laughs> he was a son of a <laughs> but boy, he was ours. Rondé had his own little way of trash talking, saying certain things that Sap would hear and Sap would repeat. <laughs> you know, Rondé's got a little sh in his neck, so now I got another sh talker in again with me. This ought to be real fun now. It sucked to play us because we weren't going to do anything complicated. The same defense every single week. And you knew it. People had this misconception that Rondé was created by the system. The Kansas City Chiefs have a great offense, but it wouldn't be as good if Patrick Mahomes wasn't orchestrating things. Can't tell you how many times we're in draft meetings, someone's making a comparison of a nickel to Rondé Barber, and it's because he kind of defined the way you play that position in football. That's the mark of a great player. After the 2000 season, my rookie contract runs out. Rich McKay's like, go test the market, man. We bring in this young kid who was coming from University of Cincinnati, Mike Tomlin. I probably was on a job about a week. Rondy was a looming free agent or so. His former coach, Herm Edwards, had just gotten a head coaching job at the New York Jets. I was a guy that was in my 20s, only a couple years older than him. And so I just wanted to make him comfortable that I could, you know, meet his needs in terms of helping him develop his, his talent and his game. Obviously, he wanted to coach me. Um, he had watched the film. He, he, he knew what type of player I could be. So I was a good player at that point. Rondy was the type of guy, man, that made coaches. And we used to joke, you know, I'd say he's LT and I'm Bill Parcells. I just knew that that's what he meant to my career. He implored me that nobody else could do what I was doing for this defense and I needed to sign back to Tampa. He aspired to have a career that was impactful as LT and I aspired to have a career that was impactful as Coach Parcells. And Knowing their story of how they were connected, I just tried to utilize that as inspiration for he and I. He comes in and resets my expectations of myself and, and what I can be as a football player. Some of those hardcore discussions, letters, analysis that we shared regarding his play was a display of those intentions. To search for the rare air that became the legacy, man, that's 20. <laughs>